Hi, welcome to week seven. I know this says week six. I wanted to review this a little because I know that some of you are waiting on tutor comments before you can upload your papers to the Dropbox. So if you haven't done that yet, do not email me a draft without tutor comments. Wait until you get that draft back. I know that sometimes it takes a little while. And submit it to this Dropbox, Major Essay 1 Tutor Draft. This draft consisted of you revising your instructor draft with comments, emailing it to either the e-tutors or the tutors at the SCA or even going in person to the SCA and getting a tutor review done. This week, week number seven, you're going to work on reviewing and revising major essay one based on those tutor comments. Now, when I look at your tutor drafts, because I read all these and look at the comments made and you get an either a credit or a no credit. And um, if I see a comment that the tutor made that isn't quite appropriate, I will email you directly and let you know, hey, they made really good comments here. But when they said to use that thesis statement, don't because the thesis statement that you're that they've underlined is not an argument for example and by the way be sure you do underline your thesis statements i've noticed quite a few of ha you haven't and then once you get your tutor review back you're going to save it in your portfolio as your name draft of major essay one with tutor comments you have to have that so the other thing I wanted to do before we get started into week seven is just kind of review a few things in the course, because I've had a couple of questions lately that need some clarification. One is about the ebook. The ebook supposedly was available through the bookstore with an access code. You purchased, purchased an access code from them and then you could sign into the book. I have been going back and forth with the bookstore and with Revel about this because the access codes were on back order. Well, they weren't on back order. You can't purchase access codes through the bookstore. That's what I found out yesterday. So if you still don't have a book because your access codes on back order, you need to go into the Revel sign in section of this course and buy the book. You don't need a, an extra uh, loose leaf binder. You don't need any of that. You just need to sign into the online book and get it ordered. The other thing some of you were concerned about was I have a voucher from financial aid to buy this book. So I've discussed that with the bookstore and they said, it doesn't matter. You have to pay for the book anyway. So even if you have this voucher, you still have to pay for the book. So you need to go to Revel and purchase the book. The other thing I wanted to review really quick was this credit, no credit and withdrawals and the portfolio requirement of this course. I've had some people asking about withdrawing. So this is a credit, no credit class. If you do not complete the coursework or you stop attending English 300, you'll get a no credit. You cannot withdraw from this class. No incompletes are given in this course whatsoever. And these are not policies that I am making up or even that the English department is making up. These are policies of the university. So it says that withdrawals are allowed only if you pass the WST with a clear developing competence or you withdraw completely from all the classes at the university. So in addition, I wanted to discuss the portfolio requirement with you here and remind you of it is that you can still, you could pass English 300 and fail the UWSR requirement because the committee does not give your portfolio a CC rating. So what happens if they don't give you a CC rating? If they don't give you a CC rating, you either have to take this course over again, take an additional course, or 
take this course over again and an additional course. You could also, if you haven't taken the WST twice, you could retake the WST and hopefully you would pass. In addition, if you do not produce a complete portfolio, you will automatically fail this course and your portfolio will not pass the committee. So if somehow you get a portfolio to the committee and it's not complete, they will automatically fail your portfolio, which means you will not pass this UWSR requirements. I also wanted to go over some of the important phone numbers and discussion boards and remind you that I am not a tech expert in Blackboard or Revel, but they have really excellent technical people to help you. And here are their phone numbers. Blackboard, call them. They're more than willing to help you. I don't want to say I call them all the time, but when I need to, I call them and they are very helpful. And the same thing with Revel. When I need them, I call them and they are very helpful for me. So call them if you need to. So what's going on in week seven? You have some reading to do and it's all grammar based. Uh, you should review your major essay one prom sheet and the instructions. There are some videos to look at and your discussion post. And then this week you're going to work on revising and polishing major essay one. So here's your major essay one prompt. Here's the instructions. Again, here's your text too that you're using and you need to use these two texts, depending on which essay you're writing. If you're writing about the nature, your only source that you're going to be quoting is this essay. If you're writing the essay about slum tourism, the only source you're going to quote is this one. So no Wikipedia, no National Geographic, no other outside sources, only these two. Again, you have some videos. Your discussion post is about anecdotes. And it says anecdotes are often used in introductions to hook readers. Narrate an event that you experienced with one, nature in your neighborhood, or two, a time when you experienced slum tourism. And then it asks you, as a peer responder, what details or language might you add to hook a reader's interest by showing instead of telling? And when you complete this, I would use this in your paper because these really are good hooks. Anecdotes always get people interested because it's like, yeah, that kind of happened to me one time also. So let's take a quick look at the instructions here, or actually the prompt. So your thesis should answer this, these questions. In your opinion, do you think touring a slum is voyeurism or tourism? Should travelers engage in this type of slum tourism? Why or why not? The answer to these is a sentence. That's your thesis. It has to be arguable because you can see right here. Why or why not? In the next one, if you're doing the nature one, it says, in your opinion, do you think people should try to undo the effects of this increased interference with wildlife or instead, should they try to improve their understanding of nature and continue to make room in their lives? Why or why not? Again, the answer to this is your thesis. It needs to be arguable. If you have a thesis that says something like, um, animals are moving more and more into our cities. That's not arguable. That's just a statement of fact. We all know that animals are showing up in our cities. I can look outside my window and 20 years ago, there weren't a flock of turkeys walking across my lawn. Today they are. So you can't use a statement of fact. And don't forget your counter argument. How would you support to someone who agrees with you? And it says that to use this, use the reading nature returns to the city as your primary source. That means that's it. Do not quote anything else. It's your primary source. The same thing up here. After your introduction containing an arguable thesis statement, use the reading slum tourism as your primary source. That's it. Do not use anything else. So if we look at the instructions here, here's your works cited page entries. This is what you should use. Don't use anything else. Just copy and paste it. Here's a successful outline for this paper. Look at it and follow it. And you should do pretty good in here. And then we talk about um, the drafts that you're going to be completing. You've done this instructor draft. The second draft is the one that was due yesterday, last week, that I know some of you are waiting to do. And then you're going to work on the final draft this week. 
So I can't stress enough, take a look at this